What if we told you that Ferrari may have just discovered a hidden weapon and it all came from a set of numbers only one man could decode? Lewis Hamilton, a man who, behind closed doors at the Mugello circuit, took the wheel of a machine that was supposed to be just another step in development, but instead it revealed something no one was prepared for. This wasn't just another filming day or a quiet run on demo tyres. It turned into a silent storm, the kind of test that leaves engineers frozen in front of their screens. What happened during those quiet laps might change everything we thought we knew about Ferrari's 2025 season. No cameras, no crowds, no media hype, just raw data and the sharp instincts of a seven-time world champion. It was there in the quiet hills of Tuscany that something clicked. A pattern in the numbers that didn't just look good, it looked unbelievable. And now, inside Maranello, there's a growing belief that this wasn't just a good day. It was the turning point, the moment Ferrari unknowingly uncovered a formula that could flip the script on the entire Formula One season. But here's where it gets even more interesting. What happened at Mugello wasn't part of any official test schedule. It was hidden in plain sight, disguised as a standard filming day, a common loophole used by Formula One teams to run their cars under strict conditions. The rules only allow 200 kilometers of running, and the car must use special demonstration tires with no changes to the engine modes. On paper, it looks harmless. But behind the scenes, Ferrari had something far more ambitious in mind. In the morning, they rolled out the older SF23 just to gather basic data and compare setups. It was routine, almost boring. But after lunch, everything changed. The garage doors opened and the SF25 appeared with quiet confidence, now carrying key upgrades, especially at the rear of the car. And behind the wheel, Lewis Hamilton, no media coverage, no live broadcasts, no flashing cameras, just silence, data, and a carefully planned test that nobody outside the team was meant to notice. Choosing Mugello wasn't a random decision. This circuit is one of the most demanding tracks in the world, known for putting every part of a Formula One car under pressure. With its fast sweeping corners like Arrabbiata 1 and 2, the car is constantly pushed sideways with high G-forces, revealing how well the suspension and chassis hold together under stress. Then there are the hard braking zones that test how stable the car stays when it suddenly slows down from high speed. And the elevation changes, those uphill and downhill sections, push the car's balance to its limits. On smooth tracks, some problems stay hidden, but Mugello exposes everything. That's why Ferrari picked this place. They needed real-world feedback, not just numbers from a wind tunnel or computer simulation. Mugello was the perfect trap. If something was wrong with the SF25, it would show up here. But instead of falling into that trap, Ferrari discovered something they didn't expect. As soon as Hamilton began his first laps in the SF25, something strange started happening. The engineers watching the telemetry in real time noticed data that didn't make sense. Not because it was bad, but because it was too good. In critical corners like Arabiata 2, Hamilton was carrying 6 to 7 kilometers per hour more than any previous data from this car. That alone would have raised eyebrows, but what really shocked the team was what happened underneath. The flat floor plank, the piece that scrapes the track and is closely monitored to stay within legal limits, showed barely any extra wear. He was going faster, but without stressing the car more than usual. At first, the engineers thought something was wrong with the sensors, they double-checked everything. But no, the numbers were real. Then they looked at the rear axle height, which usually shifts around 4mm due to bouncing and aerodynamic load. In this run, it had only changed by 1.4mm. That kind of stability was unheard of. And then there was the brake data. Even on demo tyres, which don't offer full grip, Hamilton managed to keep the brake temperatures almost perfectly stable, just a 12 degree difference. That's nearly impossible under test conditions. Once the team confirmed the data was real, all attention turned to the car's new rear suspension. This wasn't just a small tweak, it was a full redesign. Ferrari had quietly switched to a pull rod suspension system at the rear, something that teams like Red Bull have used successfully in recent years. Unlike the traditional push rod design, the pull rod setup sits lower and helps control how the car moves up and down, especially during cornering and braking. One key change was the position of the upper wishbone, often called the kneecap. Engineers had moved it closer to the crankcase to improve how the suspension reacts vertically. 
the result? A more linear response, which means the car behaves more predictably under load. This had a ripple effect throughout the car. The flat floor, which depends heavily on stable airflow, suddenly started working much more efficiently. With fewer vibrations and less bouncing at the rear, the ride height stayed more consistent, which allowed the car to produce more downforce in fast corners without sacrificing grip. It was the kind of balance Ferrari had been chasing all season, and suddenly, with one bold suspension change, it looked like they had found it. To really understand why this breakthrough matters so much, you have to look at where the SF25 came from. Earlier in the season, Ferrari's car was known for one thing, being fast on Saturdays and frustrating on Sundays. In qualifying, when everything could be controlled down to the smallest detail, the car looked sharp. But the moment race day arrived, things would fall apart. The SF25 had what engineers call an extremely narrow operating window. That means it only performed well within a very specific set of conditions. A slight drop in track temperature, a gust of wind, or even a small change in ride height was enough to throw the whole balance off. After the Austrian Grand Prix, Ferrari introduced a new floor to try and stabilise airflow underneath the car. It helped a bit, but something still wasn't right. The core issue turned out to be at the rear, specifically how the car handled bumps, braking and sudden weight shifts. Engineers noticed a problem called longitudinal rebound, where the car's rear end would bounce and shift during braking and acceleration. That motion made the car unpredictable, burned out the tyres faster and broke the rhythm driver's need to push confidently through a race. What made this discovery even more surprising was how wrong Ferrari's simulations had been. Their digital models and wind tunnel tests had never predicted the kind of stability they saw at Mugello. In theory, the car should have still struggled, especially in tricky sections like the downhill curves of Casanova and Savelli, where the su suspension has to deal with sudden changes in load. But out on the real track, with Hamilton behind the wheel, the SF25 behaved completely differently. That was the moment Ferrari realised something important. Their simulation tools, as advanced as they were, had completely missed the core issue. The bouncing, the instability, the unpredictable rear, all of it had been hidden in the virtual world. Hamilton's live feedback, combined with the unexpected data, tore down the wall between theory and reality. It was a wake-up call. The car they thought they understood turned out to be something entirely different when pushed under real-world conditions. Part of what made this Mugello test so powerful wasn't just the car, it was who was driving it. Lewis Hamilton brought something no simulator or sensor ever could, feel. His ability to sense how the car responds, even in tiny moments of grip loss or balance shift, is something very few drivers in the world have. During the test, it wasn't just about pushing the SF25 fast, it was about how he pushed it, his racing lines, how he controlled the throttle through corners, and the way he used trail braking to test the suspension in just the right way. Every move he made gave the engineers more useful data. What should have been a short and limited 200km demo run turned into a goldmine of information. One Ferrari engineer even said Hamilton was like, a sensor more precise than any telemetry. He didn't just drive the car, he translated its behaviour into something the team could finally understand and act on. Inside Ferrari, the Mugello test didn't just create excitement, it created a full-blown crisis. Before this breakthrough, the plan was clear. Begin shifting focus toward the 2026 car. That's when Formula One will introduce major regulation changes and every top team had already started preparing. Resources like wind tunnel hours, computer simulations and technical staff were being redirected to that long-term project. But after seeing what the SF25 could suddenly do, those plans were thrown into doubt. Now, a big question hangs over Marinello. Do they keep investing in the SF25 and try to turn this season around? Or do they stick to the original plan and risk letting a winning car slip away? The data says the car has potential but focusing on it means losing valuable time and momentum for 2026. Behind the scenes, engineers are pushing to dig deeper into what happened at Mugello. Meanwhile, the finance team is watching the budget closely and team boss Fred Vasseur is caught in the middle of it all. Reallocating development tools like CFD hours or wind tunnel time is a serious decision. It's not just about this season, it's about the team's future. 
And now every department has a different opinion on what comes next. Even though the Mugello test wasn't meant to be public, whispers have already started to spread. People inside the paddock are talking, calling it the day Ferrari discovered its real car. Word of Hamilton's data, the rear suspension breakthrough, and the surprising performance has started to leak out. And with every rumour, expectations grow. Fans, who've been waiting for a true Ferrari comeback, are starting to believe that this could be the turning point. But that belief comes with pressure. If Ferrari doesn't deliver results soon, this quiet success story could quickly turn into a wave of criticism. The clock is ticking. Now, Ferrari finds itself standing at a crossroads. What happened at Mugello can't be unseen. If they choose to ignore it, it won't be because they didn't know. It'll be because they decided not to act. The data is clear. The potential is real. A new door has quietly opened, and it could lead to something big. But only if they walk through it. The danger is that Mugello could become just another missed opportunity in Ferrari's long history of what-ifs. Or maybe, just maybe, it'll be remembered as the silent turning point that changed everything. The choice is theirs.